Hey, Ron, how's it going, man? Good. Good to see your face. Yeah. Well, we've chatted before. Um, a couple of years ago, I spoke with you, and you're actually in the Vol Places, Israel, with uh, the Dodies. Yes. And in fact, it's looking like in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be recording their second album. Wow. Yeah. Are you going to be going down uh, to the Middle East to do that? Or is it going to be through uh, social media or are they coming here? Either they're coming to Jersey, to my studio for two weeks, or we're going to go to Ireland uh, okay. where I would do the music camps. My partner over there that sets everything up locally, he has put together a beautiful studio in Northern Ireland and we're thinking of doing it out there. Yeah. Well, that's good because you can meet halfway, right? So, um, so for, um, well, tell us about the band camps. I, I know there's a lot of people that are GNR, Sons of Apollo, and uh, obviously Bumblefoot fans, but tell, uh, tell the Canadians that have been living in igloos that don't know, um, when do you hold your band camps? How long have you been doing it? And uh, obviously it's been a great experience, but just uh, let's touch on that. Yeah, I started doing a lot of rock and roll fantasy camps and things like that and clinics. And a lot of people have started doing their own like weekly camp or three or four days. And I would be a guest teacher at those. And I had so much that I wanted to teach and just not enough time to do it. If I was giving three or four one hour classes, it wasn't enough. Yeah. And I started in 2018 doing my own Bumblefoot music camps. And I was doing them out in Ireland. I did one in 2018, 2019. Of course, 2020 got kiboshed. But uh, looking like 2022, I could get back to doing it. So, yeah, and we just go over everything. I torture people for 10 hours a day, four or five days. And we would do a gig together where we coordinate songs and, and different people playing different songs. And it would be at some venue with proceeds going to a local charity. Oh, very so nice. To do something for the community as well. Yeah. Well, then you should change your uh, your stage name to Humblefoot because you're very humble, and you are. Actually, I was telling somebody the other day. I said I don't know too many people uh, that are like Ron. This guy I'm going to be talking to today. I said I get five emails a day, and I'm I'm overwhelmed. You're getting 50, and I, like I was telling people, and it's not everybody go slam run with these email requests, but I mean, you've been very respectful, and um, you know, God, real time, like I'll send you a message, you're in Israel, and I get one in within 12 hours, I'm like, he's got to have imposters writing for him, but no, no, you're not. <laughs> I just, I try my best. It's oh, yeah. a, usually a, a few hundred emails a day. Wow. On holidays, it'll get up to four digits. Wow, that's insane, but oh, message is coming in, yeah. It shows your character, Ron. I appreciate it. So um, you guys have obviously released two albums with Sons of Apollo, and uh, you've got some great talent in, in that band. you got Derek, you've got Jeff, uh, Derek. Uh, Mike and Billy, yeah. Um, and we were talking, it's kind of funny, um, I've heard that Mike Borton doesn't do any uh, – any uh, interviews and yeah, that's fair. I mean, like he put in his dues, but um, just let Mike know that um, if he just does this one with me, um, I'll stop the picketing outside of his uh, cottage. Deal? <laughs> I'll let him know. No, I'm just I don't deep. know how it'll work, but I'll let him know. I'm putting you on the spot, Mike. I know if you, you'll be watching this. I'm just teasing. Hey, everybody's uh, they're entitled, and I mean, understand family first. And if you've got that's no big deal. It's not my business. But anyways. Um, so is there any, uh, thing going on with Sons in the way of any kind of, uh, couple show tours in the near future? Any new music? We had 2020, you know, we yeah. put out the album early in the year and we had a lot of touring lined up, which of course we yeah. had to cancel. We got about four shows in to a 20 show European tour when we had to roll all our gear in storage and race home before all the doors closed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was in early March of 2020. Mm -hmm. And then it was a lot of rescheduling the tour and then we would have to reschedule it again and reschedule it again. So now what we have, the only thing that survived is a uh, South American tour, just four dates okay. in okay. Uh, early 2022. Okay. And, and that's what we got. And at this point, we're mm -hmm. just 
taking it slow and and yeah you know, well, it's the a historical be... worldwide pandemic we can't, I, don't know. I don't know i don't mean know. the calls are coming in now that things are opening up so yeah you guys i'm sure are going to be getting uh Quite a few requests. So a lot of those shows on that European tour, they didn't get rescheduled. A lot of bands I've talked to, they just said, you know, thank God for our budgets and our families and our road crew that we can feed them because they didn't get canceled all all out. They got postponed and rescheduled. So none of that with that tour. Oh, uh, they were rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled. Um, too many. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, so for wings the other night and. Somehow it came to me that uh, you've got a, a line of products with your hot sauces. Um, one in particular, Bumble. Uh, how did you come up? Uh, why did you decide to do that? Have you uh, always been interested in cooking and uh, culinary and the kitchen aspect? or I am interested in eating. I love yes. to eat. I heard and that. I love yeah, I love spicy food. And since about 12 years old, when my older cousin Steve bet me, he dared me to eat a hot pepper and I ate it and I liked it. And that started it. And for gifts, people would get me different hot sauces. It reached a point where half my refrigerator was just bottles of hot sauces in the door and in the shelf. Yeah. And it, it's like music. You love music, you collect music. Yeah. Uh, different types of music and it reaches a point where you enjoy it so much that you want to start creating your own music and sharing that with people. Same thing with the hot sauce. I was getting all these hot sauces and really uh, getting to know the different peppers and different flavors and different combinations and what I liked and what goes well with what. And then it reached a point where I started getting my own ideas for different flavors. And and I teamed up with a great company called K-John who made it happen. Yeah, they this was in 2012, nine years ago. Uh, we got together, got in the kitchen together, literally, and and we're testing out different possibilities. And with their expertise, we put out a line of six different sauces. Did pretty well. Where can they and get then, that, uh, Mr. Thal, where can they get that? Oh, uh, you can get them online in any hot sauce shops that have brought them in. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm not sure. I spoke to somebody that talked about getting them in at the Rock Pile in Toronto. Nice. That would be so great. if that happens, that would be a wonderful thing. If you could get the sauces out of the Rock Pile. And that would be my official Eastern Canada go-to for well, the hot sauce. I'll, I'll, I'll send them a message as well. And um, Also, I like... Hot sauces, guys. You guys want to fill my refrigerator like you do bumble puts? I'm okay with that. <laughs> you should. Everyone should. They should fill your fridge with sauce, with bottles <laughs> of sauce. Yeah, let's pain. let's let's narrow it down a bit more because I got a lot of weird friends that'd be playing practical jokes. You know what I mean? But anyways, I digress. Oh, if, if that's the case, then you would want to get them my hottest sauce. Oh yeah, which is called yeah, as you mentioned before, bumble eft. Well, we can say here in Canada, I mean, like... Oh, nice, we're, good, yes. We're taking everything away in our country anyway, so let's... Uh, <laughs> let's uh, well, they can't take away our profanity. No, oh, so... Yeah, uh, Bumble Fox. In case kids were watching, I didn't want to teach them a new word. Oh, They'll yeah. be going yeah. around in school. I just got Bumble Fucked. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, that sounds like some kind of slang that would go around the high schools, too, for sure. That's actually... Yeah. Yeah. I might patent uh, that phrase. <laughs> no, there, there are some people that have done... Uh, challenges, and at the end, they're like, I got bumble fucked, and I had shirts made up that say, I got bumble fucked. Honestly, yeah, it is a very, very hot sauce. Literally, one dot will set you on fire for a good oh. 10 to 15 minutes. In fact, the show Hot Ones, the people that make that show, they did a blog where they said that bumble fucked was the third hottest sauce in the world. Wow, yeah. All right. It, that's hot. Wow. Well, I'll we'll have to look for the uh, waiver uh, if I ever get a bunch of that stuff, and I'll, uh, I'll read it over fine. Um, yes, in just at your own risk. <laughs> um, I was just watching uh, your, your Pink Panther uh, solo you did with Axel uh, Rosa when you were in Guns N' Roses. Actually, speaking of Guns N' Roses, you're very well read, as I know. There's a band called Paradise Kitty. Which is yeah, the all world. female. You know them well? Oh, not well, but I've met them. 
Okay, I met so, a, a few of the members on a, uh, uh, one of the music cruises. Yeah, they were wonderful. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm in touch with Jenna Side right now, I'm getting her an interview because you know what? I'll look at some of these um, bands that um, are covers or tributes, and that's great and all. But I mean, this, when you get somebody of that caliber of Paradise Kitty, the Iron Maidens, where you wow, these yeah. girls can shred. Oh, I, I have to talk to yeah. them. So, they Jenna. Doing that. Give her a big hello for me. I'll give her a big uh, hello kitty for you. Okay, there you go. But anyways, I will give her a... Well, she's probably going to watch this interview anyways because she's a fan of yours, so it's talking to her. Oh, good, good. Um, you've done some acoustic stuff really, lately. Uh, tell everybody about uh-huh. planetary lockdown and uh, how you had everybody uh, insert their solos, which AKA reminds me and many, yourself included, the uh, stars, the hearing aid. Um, not the hearing aid, but the um, yeah, it was hearing aid. Right. Wasn't We're it? stars. Yeah. yeah. All every all those guys coming in to do the solos is it something like that combined, or they just send well, in? Their- what it was is I I had the song I had originally written. Let me turn this down. Yeah. If I can turn this down, hang on. Unlock. <laughs> And uh, to the viewers, if uh, I'm looking like I'm looking all over the map, just keep in mind this is the first time I'm using an external webcam, so I want to watch Ron, but I'm I've got a little bit of brain cells still functioning, so I know that I can watch the recording later. But I do know I have to look at the camera, so if I'm looking like I'm all over the map, well, it's because I am. Anyways, oh, it's all right. <laughs> if anything, I'll. Uh... Your face sometimes is getting partially cut off. I just wanted to let you know. Oh, the top or the bottom? Oh, uh, side. Side. This way better? There you go. Yeah. Because okay. a lot of people are going to be writing comments. I wish he would have went the other way so we could cut his mug out there altogether. But I mean, that's just a side shot. A side. Anyways. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Planetary Lockdown. It was a riff that I had written for the second Sons of Apollo album. Right. So this is my idea for a song. Once we started writing the album, I, uh, I was thinking, you know what? This might be better for a solo thing. So I told him, I was like, let's hold off on this, this one. And I had the idea sitting and, uh, and I was like, eventually I'm going to turn this into a song. I got to do something with it. And when the pandemic hit and we were in a planetary lockdown, I, I was like, all right. I was trapped in the studio every day in here yeah. and loving it. Just getting a chance to just build momentum and be creative and, and just make a ton of music and do a lot of recording. So I started busting out a lot of acoustic EPs and I finished the song. So I did the song and I came up with this very strange thing where I am hitting notes. Yeah. And after I hit the note, there's a delay at a speed that's exactly a quarter of the beat in length that repeats the note a fifth higher, meaning oh. that it would be like if you went do re mi fa so, so you not so when you go, do, it goes do so, so it goes like this. And all I'm doing is I'm just hitting one note going, but when I hit it with this, it goes. It is a feature of my Line 6 Helix sound module that I use for all my live and studio stuff. So I started making all these patterns where... And just all this weird... So in the feedback from the delay, it's a fifth an octave higher or an octave higher? Uh, not a full octave in between an octave. So the fifth, as if you were playing like a power chord and going, and just going don't do, don't do, when you hit just one note. Yeah. And, and it's all different. And it just gave me the ideas for the rest of the song. That's nice. So after I finished the song, I put out the song and a few months later I was like, you know, it would be cool to see if other people, what they would do for a solo section in this. So what I did is I put out a video where I left out my own solo part 
and yeah. just made a, a video backing track that people can add their own to. Oh. And about 150 people yeah. all laid solos to it and posted right. them and whatever they did, I would share them and, and uh. give them my, my thoughts on it and everything. It was a real nice way of just bringing together the guitar community of everyone from Joel Hoekstra yeah. to just some that dude just, that just plays and everyone in between and they all got to see each other and, and get familiar with each other and it was a nice way of just you know just bringing the guitar community together or the community in general because during the lockdown when it was the heaviest I mean musician wise or not people wanted to connect right yeah and actually you bring you make a good point uh, it wasn't just guitar players that did stuff. It was bass players, a violinist, a sax player, drummers, singers that made yeah. their own lyrics. So it was just a nice musical collaboration worldwide. Great. Uh, yeah. I, I heard you talking about your the module, the Helix. And that caught yeah. my attention because obviously as a Canadian, Brian Vollmer and Helix and no, but I'm going to have to look at that module because I do play a little guitar myself, uh, Ron. Oh, it's fantastic. You yeah. can do anything. Oh, you do play a little guitar. Yeah, actually, this thing is pretty cool. I got it from my friend Vicky. She actually got these online at Amazon for um, door handles or drawer handles for her daughter's bedroom. And they're stainless steel little guitars. And I use them for my coffee. I put I, I do my coffee, uh, my sugar in it that way. But no, that's, uh, that's as, about as good as I am on guitar, actually. <laughs> Um, you, sp you spoke about Joel Hoekstra, which he's not too far from you. He's just across the river. Yeah. No, he's, yeah, a, he's a great guy, great player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of good players, I know we talked about this a couple of years ago. I'd asked you to mention some of your famous, because this is primarily going through the Canadian market, but it's going to get social media through the States and uh, all around the world. But who would you say, um, again, is your inspirational or one of your favorite Canadian guitar players past or present? The first one, of course, I know it's typical, but the one that comes to mind, yeah. of course, let me uh, yeah. put my sound back here. Ah. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, Alex Lifeson. Yeah. yeah, I was a huge Rush fanatic. Uh, Rick Emmett as well. Uh, oh, I love Rick Emmett. Too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's coming out that uh, book on poetry in September, everybody. But uh, Rick was one of my favorites. Uh, he still is, obviously. Um, but yeah, Triumph and uh, Rush for sure, Ron. Were two big Canadian bands in the, in the days in our day, anyways, growing up that way. Yeah, and April Wine and Helix, and and of course, we got to mention you can't, you uh, can't forget it. Yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, the dwarfs, absolutely. The dwarfs. Actually, oh, I just talked they... to Daryl the other day. Nice, he uh, yeah. something he's got a book coming out. Uh, oh, wow. everybody's got stuff coming out. Uh, I've got this interview coming out too, guys, so just just wait for it. Um, so yeah, Alex, obviously, um, is there any band you're listening to in particular these days, Ron, that, uh, you'd like to give a shout out to that's up and coming or anything or? Ooh, you know, the first one that pops into my head, always that pops into my head is the band Thank You Scientist. Okay. A incredible band. Uh, they're like a mixture of just prog metal and Zappa. Uh, but just so incredibly beautifully musical. It's drums, bass, guitar, and he does also play some fretless and a great singer and two horn players and a violinist. And they make the most interesting music I've ever heard, the most interesting rock music. It's just beautiful. It touches every part of your brain. Uh, well, yeah, incredible stuff. I've obviously grown up into the metal scene, the, you know, the Iron Maiden, the, the, the Judas Priest, the Randy Rhodes is my favorite all time. But I, I've listened to other things. I've, I've, I was blown away by Michael Bublé in Mexico City when I saw him live. I couldn't believe I liked that kind of music. But at the same time, if I, listen, I listened to the band called the Mad Caddies, and it's a ska band. 
but they throw horn sections into their music. So, I mean, music is so diverse. You can throw any instrument into any song and it could be great. Like when people hear, you know, horns and saxophones as a hard rock kid in the 20s, it's like never would I ever listen to a band that's got a saxophone. But no, there's a place for everything, era. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can put any ingredients together and make any kind of dish. Mm -hmm. yeah. True, true. Uh, when's the last time you were recognized in public? Just uh, one of those quirky questions that I figure you don't get asked often, so I'll ask it. I don't know. I don't. It's hard to with masks. When I think of the last times I've actually gone out and yeah. seen strangers, either it was to play a show mm -hmm. or just visiting friends. Yeah. So either way. Hard to. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Yeah. And I guess the last time I was recognized was when I did the Paul Gilbert camp. Okay. Uh, like two weeks ago. Yeah. Because I was one of the teachers there. So 90 people yeah. recognized me. Yeah, Paul's uh, somebody to get in touch with. Um, so is there anything solo you're doing, Ron? Like uh, any acoustic shows locally in Joyzy? Or, uh, in Joyzy. Joyzy. Uh, I am limiting shows for many reasons. Yeah. Uh, one being that half the time you book something, it gets canceled or postponed. So I would rather just wait it out sure. and not keep doing that over and over. Uh, the other is I love being off the road. I have over toured for so many years Maybe. that I've missed out on life. And to be home, to see family, to just yeah. be, feel human. And mm -hmm. I love it. And I'm seeking more balance now. I'm going to tour less. I'm going to create more. And I'm going to just live a peaceful life a hell of a lot more. So, well, yeah. So COVID-19, I've asked a lot of people, I said, has it changed you in any ways? It changed me in a few ways, obviously. Um, a lot of the ways, um, well, I mean, how should I rephrase that? At the beginning, I was angry. I was frustrated with, with all of it. But I mean, you got to take the good from everything. So I think I've get, gained a bit of a spiritual aspect in my life and it's changed me patience-wise. But it obviously seems to have changed your perspective on, you know, life in general, on what your, what, what your true values should be and are in your perspective, uh, pre-pandemic and as opposed to now, per se? Yeah. yeah, I'm seeking a just a different balance of everything in my life. It's like when you're touring and touring and touring, you just do it more and more and more and you, you just become this touring robot and that's yeah. what you do. And you don't even realize that you've become that. It's just what you do. You tour and then you tour again, you tour more and you tour more and you're just, you come home just to visit. You don't even unpack your suitcase. Yeah. You go home just to make enough time to take the car into the shop and go to the dentist. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, like everybody would dream of the life that, you know, you have and, and a lot of, um, you know, your colleagues in the industry. But, I mean, everybody's human. And, I mean, you guys uh, do miss out on those sort of things that uh, we, we take for granted, to be honest. And, you know, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm happy for you that um, – you found something in, in, in this pandemic that uh, you, you sound really happy, which you always are, but I uh, appreciate you taking the time today. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one last thing, and I'll let you go. Um, respectfully, I'm going to let you go. I don't want to, but I mean, I understand you have things on the go. Um, what would you say to your Canadian fans and um, Border City Rock Talk viewers uh, um, about potentially seeing us again? The venue near us. Ah, thank you for the, the many years and decades of joy and everything that we've been able to do together, and hopefully there will be more. Uh, yeah, just thank you, and I look forward to hearing from you and, and seeing you. Right on, Ron. Hey, can you do? Can you play us a bit of the uh, the Pink Panther uh, solo? <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll I'll move my mug outside of camera view, and then I'll slowly just uh, exit out. Is that does that work for us? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a little extra bonus here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. Please subscribe and share. <laughs>
Thank you.